China is currently building what could become one of the world's largest and busiest launch centers. This is taking place in Hainan, a provincial level island at the very south of China and roughly the size of a country like Belgium. And when people think of this place, they generally think of a moderately developed agriculture based territory with rice pads, white sand beaches and some famous local dishes. But more interestingly for us, it is today the home of China's most recent launch site, the Wenchang Space Launch Center in the northeast of the island. And while this launch center is still modest today in terms of the launch cadence with just a handful of launches every year, this aspiring launch site, which is currently being upgraded, has the ambition of becoming the largest and most active spaceport in all of Asia, launching almost all of the country's high profile missions. So what's so special about Wenchang and how does it plan to become the Cape Canaveral of the East? I'm Jean Deville. Welcome to the Dongfang Hour and let's find out. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Dongfang Hour. Please make sure your seatbelt is securely fastened. Up until the 2010s, China basically relied on three traditional landlocked launch centers to launch its rockets. These launch sites go by the name of Zhou Quan, Taiyuan, and Xichang, situated in different parts of China, and launching the older generation of the country's Long March rockets. And while this has been a working combo in the past, these launch pads suffered from clear disadvantages. First of all, they were and still are landlocked launch sites, meaning that after the launch, rocket debris like the first stages and the strap-on boosters come back down on Chinese territory and potentially hitting inhabited areas like villages. And while these villages are evacuated in advance, so life loss is unlikely, it can still generate damage and this is aggravated by the fact that these older generation rockets use an extremely toxic propellant combo, which is UDMH and nitrogen tetroxide. Another disadvantage is that Chinese rocket parts are transported through the national railway system to these launch sites, and the maximum size you can fit through these Chinese tunnels is a diameter of 3.35 meters. And so naturally, this is a big disadvantage when you want to build increasingly heavy rockets that just can't fit through these tunnels. And final negative point, none of these traditional launch sites are ideal for launching to geostationary orbit, as even the spaceport with the lowest latitude of the three, Xichang, is at 27.9 degrees north, so payloads don't benefit as much as they could from the tangential velocity of the Earth's rotation when compared with more southern locations closer to the Earth's equator. Now, of course, there were reasons for this suboptimal setup. These launch sites were built during the Cold War, a period during which China had a strained relation with both the Soviet Union and the United States. And since China had a much weaker military, it built its launch sites deep into the country, away from borders and the sea to decrease their vulnerability. Now, as we move into the 1990s, China increasingly gained confidence in its military. It was integrating the global economy. And even more significantly, it was beginning a large-scale space exploration program, which would include a space station as well as lunar and Mars exploration missions. China needed to design for this a heavy lift rocket, which would turn out to be the Long March 5. And for this, it needed a launch site to accommodate these larger rockets. And this was the starting point of Wenchang. The Wenchang Launch Base project was validated by the Chinese State Council in September 2007 and the construction started in 2009, turning what was essentially a rural area with agriculture fields and ponds into a full-fledged launch site by 2016. The launch site would be built near Hainan Island's city of Wenchang, which gave the name to the launch site, although the closest urban area is actually the small town of Longlo. And so, situated at a lower altitude of 19.6 degrees north, the Wenchang Launch Center enables rockets to send between 7 to 15% more payload into geostationary orbit compared to China's other geostationary launch site, Xichang. The location in Wenchang also solved many problems. As you can see, the immediate proximity with the sea means that suborbital rocket debris falls into the ocean rather than on land, and rocket parts are no longer transported by train. They are manufactured in the coastal city of Tianjin, and then they're shipped to the Qinglan port of Wenchang, from where they are then brought to the launch site by road transportation. 
And this enables China to employ much larger and heavier rockets compared to its other launch sites. The rocket parts are then delivered to one of the launch site's two vertical assembly buildings, also known as VABs. There's a VAB for the Heavy Lift Long March 5 and a separate one for the Medium Lift Long March 7 and Long March 8. Once the rockets are assembled, they are rolled out on a mobile launch platform that slowly displaces the rocket from the assembly building to the launch pad situated 2.8 kilometers to the south. You have two launch pads. You have the LC-101 and the LC-201, with each being dedicated to different rockets. The mobile launch platform itself is an absolute monster at 2,000 tons. That's literally two and a half times heavier than a fully fueled Long March 5. It rests on eight pairs of motorized wheels, which can provide a speed of up to 1.8 kilometers. And the platform also provides power, propellant, and air conditioning through the umbilicals and the six orange colored swing arms of the umbilical tower. Now, if you have a closer look at the environment around the launch pads, we can see fairly classical launch pad stuff. You have lightning protection towers, which create a Faraday cage effect to avoid the rocket getting hit by lightning. And you also have liquid hydrogen, oxygen, and kerosene storage areas around the pad, which through a series of pipes are able to fuel the rocket tanks just hours before the launch. So, so far, while well, this is interesting, it's a modern launch site that's launching China's new generation rockets, it's nothing extraordinary, and the cadence of launch remains modest, as mentioned. So, what's the fuss about? Well, it's what comes next. Similarly to what we've been seeing in the US in recent years, large-scale constellation projects are building up in China. And just to give you a few examples, you have many local companies like CGSTL, Guodian Gaoke, Zhuhai Satellite, Tianxian, or Yunyao Yuhang, and many others which are planning things like IoT and Earth Observation Satellite constellations. And of course, you have the massive state-led Guowang Broadband Internet constellation, which in theory could have up to 13,000 satellites. To provide enough launch opportunities for all of this demand, China has started building in April 2022 a new commercial launch site next to the existing ones, which should notably be used for the Long March 8. A single launch pad should represent an additional cadence of 25 launches a year, and Chinese space industry officials have hinted in the past at the construction of a second dedicated Long March 8 launch complex, bringing the annual launch cadence of Long March 8s alone to 50. And naturally, if this really materializes, this would be a pretty crazy number considering that the total number of launches in 2021 in China was of, you know, roughly that number. Separately, commercial launch companies like Deep Blue Aerospace and iSpace, who are preparing medium lift reusable launch vehicles for 2023-2024, have also signed agreements to launch from Wenchang. An iSpace's Hyperbola 2 rocket, for example, uses methane rather than kerosene as its fuel, and this could potentially mean another separate dedicated launch pad to be built in Wenchang. And perhaps the cherry on the cake that could make Wenchang the equivalent of the Kennedy Space Center is the role that it will play in China's space exploration program. China is planning two new generation super heavy rockets in the coming decade. You have the Long March 5 DY, which is a sort of a Falcon Heavy class three-stage Carolox fueled rocket which could fly as early as 2026 and which will be the launch vehicle for China's first crewed lunar mission by 2030. And you also have a two-stage variant that's meant to launch China's NGCS, the next generation crewed spacecraft, which is a sort of Chinese equivalent to NASA's Orion spacecraft. And then of course you have the absolute beast of a rocket, the Long March 9, which is an SLS class launch vehicle of which we don't really know the definite design because it's changing all the time, but this rocket would basically put anything between 150 tons and 200 tons into low Earth orbit with the aim of serving key missions in the 2030s for the ILRS, which stands for the International Lunar Research Station. And this is basically sort of the Sino-Russian equivalent of the Artemis program. So while Wenchang remains a rather modest site today in terms of cadence, it seems like in the coming years it could acquire a status comparable to the Kennedy Space Center, from which mythical crewed spacecraft were launched and are still launched to this day. We don't know exactly what this will look like, but some Chinese media papers and magazines have occasionally provided illustrations which can give us an idea of the massiveness of this future launch base. Admittedly, there's still a long road ahead for the Chinese with some areas of uncertainties, so you'll probably have to stay tuned to the channel to see how these events unfold. And by the way, just a quick plug for some space swag. 
At Dongfang Hour, we've been working for a while on some exciting new China space themed merchandise. And with this episode on Wenchang, I thought I'd give you a sneak peek at our first items. We'll be releasing a series of t shirts and mugs which celebrate Chinese launch sites. We have, of course, Wenchang, but also Xichang, Zhou Chuan, and Taiyuan. And each launch site design highlights unique references to the environment it's situated in, has a distinctive color scheme, and they will be available in different sizes. The store should be up in a couple of weeks, so do keep an eye out in the coming episodes to stay informed. As always, a special shout out to all our Patreon supporters who are instrumental in helping this channel grow. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.